Hi, welcome to Channel Squared, where we connect with you, the divine, and channel here with you live. I'm Heather Marie, founder of Soulgate. And I'm Jody Lynn Craven, founder of Abundance Consciousness. And today we are talking about human emotions and the spiritual awakening. Ooh, <laughs> just in time for Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all the emotions. All the emotions. There's a lot of emotions, I feel like, that happen during spiritual awakenings. And some of them are like super wonderful, amazing. You're like, oh my God, did that really just happen? And some of them are like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I just hate my life. I, you know, depression sets in, like there's just a lot of, of different things. So I think like us talking about some of the human emotions that go into spiritual awakening, I think is going to be super amazing. And Mm -hmm. um, if you guys want to share what human emotions you've experienced during your spiritual awakening, drop them in the chat. We'd love to hear them. So Jody Lynn, what are some of the emotions that you have experienced during your spiritual awakening? All of them. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's really interesting. I think um, I started to have my, I mean, we've talked about in previous episodes when we were going through our ascension journeys, the joy, the pain, you know, all of that, um, that it wasn't one definitive moment, so to speak, where we were like, wow, we've ascended, you know, Um, it was a, it was a journey. And I think that it's, it's been like one of those pendulums swinging, you know, my life was kind of in the middle before joy on one side, pain on the other, and it was here. And then when I went down the spiritual rabbit hole, I feel like when I started to work with energy and really tap in, if this side was joy, uh, it was like, and then eventually it came back to like pain, but like on a completely different level and it's been like volleying back and forth and it has has reached a lot more balance now um I would say but yeah there was all of the colors of the rainbows in terms of feelings along this journey from you know ecstatic excitement bliss uh like the highest forms of like euphoria that I've ever felt like I I haven't done a lot of drugs I'm let me be honest I've just been a a very vanilla kid um so I'm not very experienced in that way but from what I've heard other people say about doing different things um what I experienced in these moments of my spiritual journey were very similar to that of like these insane, insanely beautiful euphoric moments. And then there has been the opposite too of, of extremely devastating pain and suffering. How about you? I would say probably the same, you know, there were definitely uh, moments that were, ridiculously awesome. Um, and there were moments that were ridiculously horrible. Um, you know, one of the, I'm going to start with my pain first, and then I'll go into the awesomeness. Um, because there was definitely a point in my, um, you know, I'm still, you know, in my ascension, obviously, like we all are, I don't, I don't know that I'll land in my full expression of myself, even in this lifetime. But, um, but there was a moment in 20, 2020, I think. Um, I want to say it was the fall of 2020 that, um, I went to a really dark place and I've talked about this on the show before this really dark place that I went to. And, um, there was just a lot of, uh, 
I don't know if it was just uh, bad energy that was clinging to me, if there was an attachment, you know, there could have been a lot of different things. And I, you know, I never did get the full story about what actually happened to me. Um, and mostly I don't really care. I am just glad that that's part of my life is over <clears throat> because it had been the first time in a very long time that I was like even suicidal where, you know, I it just seemed like the easiest way to end the suffering for people who cared about me was for me to just go. And I would just didn't want to do it anymore. And I was seeing information, you know, coming down the pipe that was very terrible. You know, I could see, I was seeing the end, you know, like of humanity and, um, mm -hmm. and it was just a really, really dark place and I didn't want to do it anymore, but, you know, I was newly married, you know, I'd only been married. I hadn't even been married a year to like the love of my life, you know? And so that, that one contract, that one commitment, that one promise, I feel like is really was really what saved me, you know? Um, and I remember Quinn coming to me and saying to me, you know, I don't know how much longer I can carry you. And that was a huge like moment for me because I was like, I am dragging him down with me and that's mm -hmm. not fair to him. Um, so I think that was like a very, very painful time. Um, I just was questioning everything about my life, everything I knew about my life, everything I knew about my soul, you know, everything was on the table being questioned and it was like an interrogation and it was, it was terrible experience. And, um, going through that now being on the other side and like remembering what that was like, I wouldn't trade it for anything because it's a reminder to me every day that no matter how hard things get and how terrible it actually like seems or feels like it is, it's literally a blip in time, you know? And when I talk about this, it sounds like it went on and on and on for months and months and months, but it was literally like, I don't know, maybe two weeks or a month of this that I was going through this. And, um, but man, it just felt like an eternity. You know, mm -hmm. I felt like I'd been going through it like my whole life. And I had forgotten about all of the awesome things I had had in my life. You know, I had an amazing husband. I had a cool hobby, you know, like I am like channeling for people and, you know, like, yeah, you know, the governor stole my business, you know, because we were still locked down. And yeah, people were dying from something they shouldn't be dying from. And yeah, the, you know, uh, government is totally corrupt and, you know, awful. Mm -hmm. But it it also brought me to a place of like, remembering like, who, who I am, and, and really seeing all of the beautiful souls that were in my life mm -hmm. at that moment, because it was like seeing all of that and knowing like how much I like am loved and cared about and knowing that like, you know, my brand new husband is literally carrying me on his back and that he was willing to do that for so long was, uh, was very, humbling, you know? Mm -hmm. So when I look at some of like the extreme, like awesomeness that I've had with it, I would say like one of the top experiences I had that was like super amazing where I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the most bitchiness thing in the whole world <laughs> was, uh, was the first time I like had that like up close vision of like my high self, um, or God or however, uh, you want to call it. But at the time, at that time, I felt like it was God. I, after much, much looking into it was my high self. So 
Um, but either way, it was still a totally awesome experience. And I, I had just, uh, completed Reiki one. And so I was in my 21 day Reiki cleanse where I was doing Reiki on myself and on my plants and on my animals, but not anything else. And so I was like laying or like, kind of like leaned back in, in bed doing, you know, Reiki on myself. And I had my, um, my hands over my heart chakra and I was doing Reiki on my heart chakra and I had my eyes closed and it was the craziest thing. There was like these clouds and then they like separated and a face like came through like this. And it was kind of like, like bluish in color, but sort of like transparent. Right. Yeah. And it was like this much of the face. It was like the eye and like the cheek. And it was kind of like this doing this, like looking at me and I'm like, Oh, hi, who are you? You know, <laughs> it was like so cool. And like, I just like, I think about that experience all the time because it was just so profound and amazing. Cause that was the first time I'd ever really like had an experience like that. And it was like so lovely and it was so close. It was like right here, you know, it was like, <laughs> you know, I could have kissed it right on its yeah. cheek. You know? <laughs> um, and so like that moment was like such a huge moment. It was like so amazing. And I was like, wow, there's so much more than I could even imagine. Like, mm -hmm there is a world on the other side and it just came to see me, mm -hmm. you know? And so it was pretty, that was like an amazing moment. Like that is definitely like top three moments I'd say right now in my <laughs> life, but <laughs> super cool. Oh, I love yeah. that. Uh, I feel like I, I've had a few different kinds of experiences that were similar to that Um, of just like seeing that there's so much more than what we've previously seen. And I think that in being in those experiences and like expanding that feeling of joy or bliss or whatever, like the w one time when I was in Rome, I was having like doing some energy work with this energy healer. And literally after that, I felt like I was walking on the clouds. Like I really felt like I was hovering <laughs> above the ground. Like it was just, I felt so happy. Like I've just never felt that happy up to that point in my life. I like, I just, it never registered as that big, like full body happiness. And um, I think that was always my reminder too in the dark moments that both exist. So like, even though the, in this moment, I'm experiencing this depression or this darkness, um, that at the exact same time, there's access to the other side of that too, without mm -hmm. bypassing it, if you will. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and I think too, like, you know, when you, um, when you're supporting people, you know, we both coach, we both have uh, spiritual students and we have uh, people that we support from a coaching perspective. And, um, and so when you are supported and when you're in that like support role for another person, it's really important to help them to understand that if they're a support person for someone that sometimes the shadow is the most liberating part of the journey. Mm -hmm. You know, um, sometimes people work with me just to get through their shadow. You know, all of the shenanigans that they got to get through to get to the next point in their journey, you know, they thought they were hiring me for one thing, but the reality is, is that they were hiring me because I was the only one who could bring them through their shadow. Mm -hmm. And, and when they get to that other side, all of a sudden the doors open and they don't need, they don't need the support anymore because they were able to, you know, transist that period of, of time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a, uh, a client right now who has a new client and, you know, there is some shadow work that needs to be done. 
And, you know, it's, it would be like human nature to kind of want to like tippy toe into it or kind of dance around it a little. But the fact is, is sometimes it's better to rip off the bandaid and then start sweeping up the aftermath, you know, mm -hmm. because it's, uh, you know, the sooner you jump in, the sooner you get it over with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the faster that you accelerate that part, the easier it is, you know, maybe real oh, hard for a short time, but like, it's yeah, but it's shorter. a blip. It's a very short yeah. period of time. The more that you agonize over it, the more that you're like, oh my God, I don't want to do this. And you delay the inevitable, the longer it's going to take for you to move through. Like it ain't going away. So mm -hmm. you might as well just turn around and face it and be like, all right, pew, pew, mf -er, let's go. <laughs> like, let's go totally. together. Let's see what's here. Um, I think it's so interesting. Something at the beginning of our conversation that dropped in was this belief system that we have as humanity, whatever, spiritual individuals on a journey, in the ascension process, whatever you want to call it, all the people that are on the journey of ascension. There's this myth that... Um, once you've ascended, or if you are properly going through the ascension period, then you will never feel bad again. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that is a part of the ascension. There's the duality as mm -hmm. you ascend and things get deeper. The expression gets deeper, I think, on both sides. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I mean, if it were all like rainbows and butterflies, there'd be no contrast. So what are you ascending from or yeah. to, right? Yeah. If it's already all lovely, there is no ascension. And the other thing is, is that sometimes people look at like, you know, when I get there, when I'm done, when I'm ascended, when I'm done, <laughs> then it's just going to be all lovely and wonderful. And yeah, maybe it is. But when you get there, from my understanding, that's the end of the line. The journey ends at ascension, complete enlightenment. Like, are you ready for your entire soul journey to end? Maybe, maybe not. You know, you ask my sister and she's like, I'm out of here. I don't ever want to do this again. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, but, you know, like so many people give this, like, like the destination of being fully ascended or reaching that seat of enlightenment where you are the all knowing of everything. Right. Like people look at that, like it's, it's the goal, mm -hmm. but it's not the goal. The goal no. is not to get there. The goal is to experience the journey. That's the goal is to have of the journey. Yeah. The exactly. journey of getting there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's so, so interesting. I, Sorry, go ahead. I think that that's the part that people miss so yeah. much. I'm like, yo, you have to like, this is the goal. You're living the goal right now. Like this dark moment you're going through, this is the goal. <laughs> you know, I know you think it's over there, out there, some distant place far, far away where, you know, there's world peace or whatever you think is it kumbaya all day long. But that's, that's, that's the end of everything existence for you. Perhaps. Perhaps. Brings in questions about new earth, but we won't touch that yet. Maybe not today. Um, but yeah, I think it's so interesting. And I used to be this person too, where I was like, oh, what did I do wrong? I'm experiencing this again. Um, um, and that was very dramatic. And I feel for everybody that also feels that way. I'm not I'm not saying that to mock or to to make fun of or anything like that, because I've been there. Um Though I do want you to realize that the you in this space going through it again is a new you. This is the first time this version of you is going through it. And if you really look at the differences in the way you're perceiving this moment, even though there's a lot of similarities, you can see that you are different because your trajectory is up. You're 
cycling maybe through the same things over and over again, but you're slowly moving towards that ascension path, that upward, you know, way, if you will, on that path. And there's nothing wrong with you if you're experiencing something negative or something that you don't like. It's an opportunity, an opportunity to choose something else, an opportunity to see how far you've come, an opportunity to go deeper, get curious, more curious than you've ever gotten. Like, why is this coming up? Why does it bother me so much? Why am I so attached to this is bad or good or whatever? But, and I think we've talked about this on, you know, previous episodes that, In the joy experiences, we experience them and it's great and it's lovely and wonderful and amazing. But in the pain, we really go within and we figure some shit out. So I don't think we would have the ability to go so far in terms of the pendulum swinging in terms of joy or towards joy and bliss and those things if we didn't have that contrast. So there's beauty in that. For sure. I find that some of the greatest epiphanies of all time happen in those dark moments. You know, those moments where you have to surrender and just take it in. What am I here to learn? What is this trying to teach me? You know, why is this happening to me? Like asking the questions that bring the clarity. Sometimes when we get into those moments, instead of asking the questions, we just, you know, I'm going to be pissed off. I'm going to be sad. I'm going to cry. I'm going to bitch about it, you know, whatever. Right. But at some point coming like doing that work to come within and and ask the questions is is key. That's one of the things that I love so much about like our friendship is that sometimes I'll call you up and I'll be like, oh my God, can you believe this? And I've got <laughs> flames coming out of my ears and you're <laughs> like, you're like, I got the bucket, go, you know, and I can just vomit it all out into the bucket. And then you'll always ask me, do you want to just be mad or do you want me to reframe this for you? And sometimes I'm like, okay, yeah, let's reframe it. And then sometimes I'm like, no, no, no. I want to stomp my feet a little longer, you know? And you'll be like, okay, when you're ready, you know, ask these questions and, um, and it's super helpful. And, um, and I think that that's the, the beautiful side of it, right. Is, is being able to, step back and go, okay, now that I'm done having my temper tantrum, let's look at this. And what does this actually even mean? And maybe it means absolutely nothing. Yeah. Maybe you don't have the answer yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I also think true. <laughs> um, two things that have been well, three things that have been my greatest teachers involve a lot of emotion my relationship with my significant other, um, money and, uh, conceiving conception, trying to have a baby. And I feel like I've navigated a lot of stuff in those first two and well, in, in the conception part of things. Um, and I feel like I've had a lot figured out, but it doesn't mean that surrender is ever easy. And I think, you know, on the trying to have a baby side of things, that's been one of the more difficult things to surrender and to have faith within that whatever is going to happen next will be the most beautiful and extraordinary thing. And that it's something that I can't even conceptualize or imagine because I couldn't have imagined the rest of my life, like how everything else played out. So why would this be any different? Um, But it doesn't mean I can say that in this moment, but you didn't see me, you know, three, four, five weeks ago when I was in the deep despair of depression, you know, having another ectopic pregnancy and being in that place of this one hit me really hard and I was really depressed. Um, And by choice, by design alone, because I kind of didn't tell anybody But in those, I needed to go through that darkness. I needed to feel that stuff and and come to a different 
place with it, a different understanding of, of myself. I, it was another, like, for lack of a better term, like cracking open all over again. And although I don't know what the future holds in that realm, I feel better and better and more joy and hope around what the future could be, um, no matter what it is. Yeah, I think that <clears throat> ugh, the birthing thing, you know, I mean, conception is really, I mean, that's a hot button for me too. It, it <clears throat> We have a whole episode about our stories. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. It's the big blue tile that says the F word. Uh, which is fertility. Um, you know, if you guys want to check that out, by all means, get your tissues because uh, the feedback I've gotten from it was that it's probably one of the saddest episodes they've ever watched. So, um, you know, it's just what it is, right? And and I think that uh, I believe that the day that that episode aired was the day that you uh, that you like lost your ectopic. So. That was a pretty, uh, that was a pretty poignant moment in time. Um, yeah. Like what the heck yeah. timing? Uh, yeah. That yeah. was not I think planned. That, no, <laughs> like we, wasn't planned. we did the appointment and, or not the appointment. We, we recorded it and then it was several weeks later that it was slated to air. Right. 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 Exactly. So we had no idea when we recorded that I was pregnant at that point. Right. And then all of that happened right. in the day. And aired. I think that at the time that we recorded, I don't remember. I think I had, I think I had just had my miscarriage, I think shortly before, or like, right. Maybe what, within a week or something of, mm -hmm. of when we recorded that or, uh, or even maybe within a few days, I don't remember. I remember it being very, very close. Cause we were very close together, yeah. um, in that, in that process. So, um, yeah, that was crazy, crazy, crazy time. But, you know, like that, those types of experiences, while they're painful, they give you the opportunity to explore something different and something new and, you know, how you handle it each time a little differently than the time before, you know, gives more, uh, more perspective and more opportunity for growth. So while, I hope that the next pregnancy is successful. <laughs> you know, it it does definitely change with each with each, you know, miscarriage and and the there's definitely more like hope because of the way that the the information and the emotions can be processed. Mm -hmm. So when it first happened for me, I was just super pissed, you know, because I felt like if I would have been heard, it maybe wouldn't have happened that way. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, whatever. <laughs> okay. So, mm -hmm. uh, human emotions during, uh, the Ascension, I, I think, think that anything point. goes. Yeah. Huh? And I think, I think it's the point. Like the yeah. point, like that is ascension is the feeling is ascension is the feeling like it, right. they are one in the same. Like, I think that our, the reason why we're here is to ascend and in that ascension, it is to experience the constant shifting and morphing of everything that is called the experience, the human experience, you know, mm -hmm. even though some things are dark um you know some things are hard we still won the lottery being here i mean i think if you were to ask the beings on the other side who don't have the access to emotion don't feel things the way that we do here that they would trade any day including our hardest days to be here to feel yep. it if you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button. Don't forget to su subscribe. We want to get this message out to everybody and anybody that is ready to receive it. And uh, I think we should, I think we should end it there. I think I have that one more thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. The beauty what? in the swing 
of from high to low, you know, whatever, left to right, however you want to see the swing of emotion. There's so much beauty in there. And I can't count the ways that my heart is opened by going through that journey. And I think that that's the also the point here is open up your heart and allow yourself to see all the good and all the beauty that has come from your own journey and just love a little harder on yourself and those around you. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. See you guys next week. <laughs>